Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095, Basic, or basic Algebra. We're going to look at section 8.1, which is solving systems of linear equations by graphing. Now, what it means to solve a system of linear equations, since we're dealing with linear equations, we're dealing with lines. A system just means more than one. So we're going to look at an examples that have two lines. So when we look for a system, uh, we're looking for the solution that satisfies both equations at the same time. And what that really means is if we have two lines, we're looking for the single point at which two lines would intersect. Some point x, y is consistent in the equation of this line and the equation of that line. So we're looking for a single ordered pair that satisfies more than one equation. So let's look at an example here. If I have 2x plus y equals 5, and I have the line x plus 3y equals 5, what if I was asked, is the ordered pair 5, 0 a solution to the system? Well, if it's a solution to the system, it has to be true in both equations. This common pair that they'd share. Lines can only intersect in one spot. So if I plug this in, I have to plug it into both equations to determine if this is a solution to a system. So if I plug it in, this is my x value. So 2 times 5 plus y, which is 0, equals 5. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 0 is not equal to 5. So if this isn't true in any one of those lines, it is not the solution. So this is not a solution. What if I, well, and if I did plug it into here, if this is 5 and that's 0, it would be true in this equation, but it has to be true in both to be a solution to the system. If we look at 2, 1, well, let's check it in this one. 2 times the x value of 2 plus y, which is a 1. Is that equal to 5? 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. That's true. So it's true in the first line. It has to be true in the second line to be a solution to the system. So x is 2 plus 3 times y, which is 1. Does that equal 5? 2 plus 3 is 5. That's a true statement. It was true in both. This is a solution to our system of linear equations. This is the point at which these two lines intersect, in which they cross. All right, let's look at an example where we're going to solve it by actually graphing the lines. And hopefully, we recall from chapter 6 how to graph lines. Now, we can do it many different ways. We can put them in slope-intercept form and use the intercept as our starting point and use the slope. Or maybe we want to use the intercepts to graph it. So I'm going to use the intercepts because both of these equations are in a general form. So let's find the y-intercept for this equation. So I'm going to cover it up. If x is 0, I find the y-intercept. Well, when x is 0, y would be 4. 4 equals y, y equals 4. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to plot that value. When x is 0, y is 4. And I need another point in order to graph a line. I need at least two points. So I'm going to say, well, what if y is 0? I'm going to find the x-intercept. Well, 2 times what is 4? I know that 2 times 2 is 4. So when y is 0, x would have to be 2. So I'm going to plot that point. x is 2 when y is 0. And now I'm ready to draw the line. And because we're graphing, systems of linear equations, our graphs have to be precise. So I'm going to grab a straight edge so that I can graph that. I should have been a little bit more prepared. But now I have my straight edge. So I can go ahead and I can connect these two points with a nice straight line. And we know that these lines would continue up and down continuously. So now that I've graphed one line, I need to graph another. Well, I'm going to use the same uh, method I used to graph that line. If x is 0, I have the y-intercept. And if y is 0, I have the x-intercept. So I'm going to graph these two points. 0, 2 would put me right here. x is 0, y is 2. And 2, 0 
Well, look, it's our lucky day. They share the point. That is their solution. But let's graph it so that we can actually see it. If I connect these two lines together, we'll see that they both intersect at that point. And now, because it's on the graph, it's just a coincidence that it happens to share the uh, intercept. But that is the solution. This value is when x is 2, y is 0. And from the graph, it looks like that is the solution. How can we check our work? Just like we did in that previous example, we can plug it in. Is 2, 0 a solution to this equation? Well, if this is 2 and that's 0, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 0 is 4. That's true. If this is 2 and that's 0, 2 plus 0 is 2. It's true. So I know that my solution is the ordered pair 2, 0. Your solutions have to be written as ordered pairs because that is what that point is. The intersection has an x and a y piece to it. Now, when we find a system of equations that have a single solution, we call this a consistent system because it will consistently intersect at this point and only this point. And that's why we call it consistent. This is the only point. All right, let's look at another example. If we look at these two lines and we want to find their solution, well, I see they're in different uh, order. This one is in general form, and this one is in slope intercept. Well, without changing the equations around, I'm just going to graph them uh, as they are. So this one here, I'm going to use its intercepts when x is 0, y is 4. So 0, 4 is one of my points. And if I cover up the y, essentially put 0 in for y, I'll find the x-intercept. 2 times 2 is 4. So 0, 2 is actually the same line we saw in the last example. But now we have this line. Well, this line's in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to graph it using its intercept. So its intercept is negative 2 when x is 0. Right? When x is 0, y is negative 2. And I can use the slope from here. The slope is negative 2. So I can go down 2 and over 1. And from there, I could go down 2 and over 1. And I could continue that. But I have enough points to graph my lines. So I'm going to graph the first line right here since I plotted its points. Oh, Not the easiest thing to do on a chalkboard. And then I'm going to graph this one here. And if we look at these two lines, what do we notice? Well, we notice that they look kind of parallel. And if, if they're going to continue in the same direction, up and down like that, they're never going to intersect. Well, this is what we call an inconsistent system. The last one was consistent because it had a solution. This one's inconsistent because it has no solution. Parallel lines will never cross. Now, in that last example, both of our equations were in general form. And a good rule of thumb to go by is if your equations are in different forms, put them in the same form and simplify them. So I'm going to take this equation and solve it for y. Right? Put it in slope-intercept form. And if I do that, I just have to subtract 2x from both sides to get y by itself. And I would get y equals subtract 2x from both sides. And I'd have negative 2x plus 4. Now, if we look at this, we see, hey, I notice that their slopes are the same. And if we recall again from chapter 6, lines that have the same slope are parallel. The definition of parallel lines is they never intersect. So, if we put them in the same form, maybe we can recognize right away without even having to go to a graph or without even having to do any math. We can look at it and say, hey, the same slope with different intercepts, these are parallel lines. They won't intersect. I can say right away, these are inconsistent. And I'll just abbreviate for now. So inconsistent means they're parallel lines. They never intersect. All right, let's look at another example. We have 3x plus y equals 0. And we have 2y equals negative 6x. Now, like I said, it's a good rule of thumb to put these in the same order. And we will do that. But let's just go ahead and graph them first. 
If x is 0 for this equation, y is 0. Uh-oh, our intercept is the origin. It's both my x and my y. So I have to have another point. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick a value. I'm going to say x is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus what is 0? Well, negative 3 plus 3. So when x is negative 1, y would be positive 3. So we get those two points. And I'm going to go ahead and graph them right now. By connecting my dots, and now I'm going to graph this one. Well, it's not in uh, any particular order. So I'm just going to say, well, if y is 0, what times negative 6 would be 0? 0, 0. Hey, I found the same point. Does that mean that's their solution? Not necessarily. And we'll see why once I find another point. I've only found one point. To graph a line, I need two. So I'm going to pick another value. I'm going to say, well, let, let y equal, let's say, 4. 2 times 4 is 8. And to solve this, I'd divide by negative 6. So I'd get 8 over negative 6, which is a fraction. But that's OK. It reduces to a negative 4 thirds. So when y was 4, x is negative 4 thirds. So I'm going to plot the point negative 4 thirds and 4. Now, if I go to, to this, my x is negative 4 thirds, which is 1 and 1 third. My y value is 4. So if I go up to 4, I notice that I'm on the line again. If I connect this point with that point, it's the same as connecting these points. Essentially, these are the same line, one line right on top of the other. Well, when that happens, where do they intersect? Well, they intersect everywhere. When this happens, any point on that line would be technically an intersection, because it's one line on top of the other. They intersect everywhere. So if you were asked, what's the solution, you'd say, well, it depends on what point of the line you're at. This is called a dependent solution. One line, or one, a solution, depends on both lines. Both lines are the same. And what I mean by the same is let's go back and actually look at our two lines and say, let's put them in the same form and simplify if possible. Well, this one's in uh, general form. So let's put this one in general form. I can add 6x to both sides. So I'd get 6x and that 2y. And since I'm adding 6x to both sides, this would be 0. And then I notice that 6 and 2 have a common factor. They're both divisible by 2, and so is 0. So I'm going to divide a 2 out of each of these terms. So I get 3x plus y equals 0. Well, 3x plus y equals 0, and 3x plus y equals 0, these two lines, when simplified and put into the same form, we can see that they are the same line. So whatever point satisfies this one will satisfy this one. It has infinite solutions. So it really depends on the solution I choose. This is called a dependent system, a dependent system. So let's review. If you find a solution, it's a consistent system. That solution will be consistently the only solution. If we have lines that are parallel, there is no solution because they never intersect. We call that inconsistent. And then we have this case where maybe if we simplify it or if we put it on a graph, we see that they are the same line. This is a dependent system. The lines depend on one another because they are the same line. So try to graph a few systems of equations, two lines. Find where they intersect, determine if they're parallel, or determine if maybe they're the same line. Are they consistent, inconsistent, or dependent? Thank you for watching.